Okay, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dr. Simpson. I'm the proud principal of the Barrow Arts and Sciences Academy, as well as the Sims Academy for Innovation and Technology. I am broadcasting live from Hometown Rhythms in Winder, Georgia. So please excuse the coffee shop chatter here. I uh, hope that it's a, a, an interrupted orientation. All right, so we do have an agenda here. So we're going to start out with welcome and introductions and then move into the daily schedule at BASA. Many of uh, your students, your children uh, have, are already at BASA and so they are uh, accustomed to the daily schedule that we offer here. And then we're going to talk about the academic courses that are available to our students the graduation requirements, the support programs that we offer to our students, AP and early college opportunities, the high school magnet programs that are available, the registration process. I know that you'll be interested in how your child is getting registered for their classes and also how changes can occur to what they've been recommended for. We'll talk about the importance of the high school transcript describe and explain the student activities and athletics programs that are available. Dr. Murphy, our counselor, will talk about PSAT, SAT, and ACT information. And then we'll share a plug for two events that are coming up, including the High School 101 event and the new student orientation. Before we go any further, I would like to make a few introductions. Again, I'm Dr. Simpson and I am the principal. We have Ms. Watt, who serves as the assistant principal. Hi, everyone. We have Mr. Lathan Pooser, who also serves as an assistant principal. Good evening, everyone. We have Dr. Cheryl Guy, who's our Magnet and Academy coordinator, and she was not able to join us this evening. But we do have Dr. Cindy Murphy, who serves as a school counselor. Hi, good evening. All right, well, I wanna show you this video and introduce you to our students. They do such a great job of introducing you all to BASA, what we stand for and what our school is like. I do want to apologize in advance because there is a little bit of a lag in the video. You will hear what they say. You will have a copy of this presentation afterward. And so at, at that time, I encourage you to go back and watch this video so that you get uh, the full effect. But the kids really do a great job of describing what we're all about here at FASA. I chose to come to BASA because I knew I wanted to um, go down the medical field for my future. And so this offered me a unique opportunity to be able to prepare myself for that. So I saw an opportunity to be a part of a brand new school and organization that I most likely would not have gotten anywhere else. It's an amazing school. I saw it for the first time in I was like, wow. I chose to come to BASA because of the pathway that I chose, and I chose the fine art pathway because music has been something that I've loved since I was a little kid. It seemed like a really cool opportunity since I want to be in the performing arts as my career. Well, I, I thought this was a better opportunity for our school in my life. I, I chose to come to BASA for dance performing arts. I just instantly saw an opportunity because I could come here and I could focus on what I wanted to do. I think the atmosphere is great here. The teachers are really good. Everything is just cleaner, you know, like the layout is good. It's like a mini college almost. There's a lot more opportunities that you can get going to any other like normal high school. Students should choose BASA because it focuses on their future careers and instead of just teaching them everything that they really, just the basics of everything where they can actually learn extensive knowledge. Everybody who's here wants to be here and it just completely changes the environment. I just love, I love coming here. The pathway that I chose is uh, healthcare sciences. I'm part of the cross country team and the soccer team. I chose the healthcare pathway because I want to be a vet when I grow up. Um, I'm in audio and visual and culinary. I love like engineering and math and science and technology and I can all just have it in one package by going the STEM pathway. I would like to be involved in beta and the soccer club. Um, I chose the healthcare pathway because I'm interested in going into the nursing field. Um, I'm actually involved in dance club and I, I enjoy doing it. 
I chose the healthcare path because I love being able to help people and see people grow. We're hoping to start a gymnastics team. I'm currently doing the um, HOSA healthcare program. I'm in the yearbook club for the school and the com competitive cheerleading. Junior beta club and I'm in drama club. I'm on the cross country team and a part of HOSA. I myself wanted to become a veterinarian and I heard that they had a good medical group so instantly it was a win for me. My favorite thing about Bass is probably how organized and productive everything here is because I've been to other schools and it isn't as neatly put together as it is here. But I'd have to say the community. Everyone here is just ready to learn and no one's like doing too much or nothing. So, and it's really fun, really fun. I really like that there's not a lot of people here, so it's a very intimate setting. I really like how we have like the different career pathways and you can choose that and use that like for your classes and it prepares you for your future career. I have really good teachers. Miss Ridgeway is probably my favorite teacher. I love the layout of the campus. It's so beautiful and I like that it's more set up like a college rather than a high school. I can never say enough how much I love the environment here. My favorite thing about BASA is the fact that they include everyone. My favorite thing about BASA is probably the, the students and the teachers. They're way better than any other school that I've been to. The smaller classes allow you to have more opportunity to bring your grades up and to have a better understanding of the material that you're learning. Um, dance, I love dancing. So I, I look forward to like in class to come to dance. There's a lot more freedom than you would get like going to a normal high school. Compared to my own middle school, VASA has like more freedom. And I love it so much. I love the fact that people actually want to be here and they're coming willing to learn things, not to mess around. I could do so many different things here that I would just love to look at. I mean, I can learn to weld, I can learn to you know, be a carpenter, anything. It's about what you want to do with your life and how you're going to do in the future. It helps you find yourself in ways that I never thought it could. Our students just did a great job capturing uh, BASA and what we are all about, what we stand for and what we hope to accomplish. So we're really proud of them and hope that some of you viewing this presentation had your child represented in that video as current BASA students. All right, so many of you are familiar with the overall experience at BASA, so you know that we are on a four by four block schedule, and this allows us to balance classes and allows our students uh, to pursue additional elective opportunities that um, interest them instead of just being locked into uh, six or seven courses a year, they can actually take eight courses per year. So we do encourage, uh, or excuse me, we do seek to balance it out so that students only have two academic courses each semester, which really does uh, help them quite a bit in terms of managing their workload. We also have the innovation block, which is first thing in the morning. We've experimented quite a bit to make that the best use of time possible. So our teachers uh, facilitate project-based learning experiences during that time. But next year, we're hoping to allow students to take uh, many courses, so three-week courses that they're interested in, or sign up for tutoring or remediation if they need additional support in any sort of area. Of course, we also have the magnet learning opportunities where students are able to pursue their passions and their college and career goals. And we really encourage that. We want our students to obviously choose courses that will advance them toward whatever they end up doing in college or career, but we also want them to do things that they're just interested in and they're passionate about. So even if they don't desire to go into music, if they're interested in singing and chorus, we want them to pursue that. And of course, we offer dual enrollment opportunities. It's, it's sort of like a college campus out here. And the beauty of it is that we really do have it all. So students can be on the cross country team, be on the soccer team, be on the baseball team, but they can also take college courses and earn up to 30 semester hours uh, free before they graduate from high school, but still participate in band or chorus or dance or high school healthcare. So they have so many opportunities on this campus. It really is an amazing thing to be a part of.
I do want to encourage you, if you run across any questions, think of any questions that you would like answered, please go to bit.ly slash BASA, B-O-Q, virtual orientation questions. If it's an individual question, we will email you back to let you know a response. Um, but if it's a group level question, then we might just address it on air. So bit.ly slash BASA, B-O-Q. Dr. Murphy, I know that we have many parents and, and students on this meeting who are already students at BASA and they've already heard about CRU, but could you just re-explain to everyone why CRU is the most important thing that we do here at BASA? And maybe even talk about the seven mindsets curriculum that's coming up. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. So we just wanted to reiterate about CRU, make sure that you uh, know a little bit about that because we really feel like Crew is really the heartbeat of our school and really like the backbone that what makes us who we are here at BASA. It's really um, kind of like the building block because we really want to make sure that every student who comes to BASA feels connected here with other students and also feels connected with a trusted adult here. So we have implemented Crew, which students go to at 1130 every day, um, and we'll continue that next year. Um, they meet with 10 or 12 students in their grade level um, and kind of talk about different types of activities. They're going to do registration there. We also do social emotional learning lessons there. Uh, we re recently just received a $7,000 grant um, to implement uh, a program called the Seven Mindsets. Um, so we will be starting that this spring, continuing that through next year. So there's a lot of, of learning that goes through uh, crew, as well as um, mainly connection and together time. Uh, so we really think that crew is one of the most important things that we do, and we'll be continuing to do that um, with this first graduating class of BASA. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Going through our academic courses, like any other high school, our students are taking courses that align with the Georgia Standards of Excellence and those that advance them toward their high school graduation. So the difference is not in what our students are learning, but it's in how they're learning it. We focus on preparing them for 21st century success through innovative and project-based learning. And so just to give you an example, anytime you walk through BASA, there's certainly going to be times where you see students sitting and listening to their teacher provide important information, but those, uh, those types of learning experiences are limited. Uh, to a short period of time each day. We prefer for our students to learn in an active setting where they're a participant in what's going on. And so for example, collaboration. You know, everyone here, we collaborated on this presentation. So we know that that is a skill that our students need to, uh, to, to learn and, and further develop and refine so that they can uh, participate successfully in the workforce and college settings. And so, we, we prefer to add lots of collaborative learning opportunities in class so that students begin to flex those muscles while they're still in high school, um, because we know that will impact them uh, many years beyond that. Our students also have access to magnet programs in art and design, biomedical science, hospitality and culinary arts, media arts, performing arts and STEM. And we'll uh, talk a little bit more about those magnet programs a little bit later in the presentation. Of course, our students also have enhanced access to college courses available through Linear Technical College and Sims Academy of Innovation and Technology. You know, the fact that you can start out first block and take a high school math class and then zip over to the Linear Tech building, which is next door, and take your college level biology that will transfer to UGA or, or wherever it is you decide to go. Then third block, you take your uh, high school guitar class and then fourth block, you take an introduction to healthcare class. To be able to have all of those experiences on the same campus, again, it is, it, it's quite amazing. And I'm not sure that any other high school student in the state of Georgia has all of these opportunities available to them in one place. Dr. Murphy, could you discuss the graduation requirements uh, for our students? Certainly can. So our graduation requirements, we've had lots of questions about this. So I wanted to make sure that we clarify um, some of the graduation requirements um, that you need 23 credits 
um, as a rising junior to graduate from VASA. So as you see here, you've got four language arts credits, four math credits that you need, four science credits, um, an asterisk by the social studies because you will need the three social studies credits. I know that there have been some confusion about that, but we've grandfathered in to be able to do three credits instead of the four. So if you have four, that's great. That'll, that'll be fine. But you, if you don't take another um, social studies um, and you only end up with three, that will be fine too. You will need the specific three of world history, Amer I mean, U.S. history, and then um, government and econ your senior year. So those were the ones that you do need to have to graduate. Um, there's also gonna be three credits in CTAE or career technical, um, world languages or uh, fine arts. Those can be combined for those three credits or you could have the three um, credits in one particular pathway in CTAE, um, three world languages, or possibly three even fine arts like dance one, two, and three. Um, you will also need to have one health and PE credit. Um, hopefully all of you have, have taken that already. If you have not, uh, we need to be talking about getting, getting that credit for you uh, as we head into our junior year. And then you'll also have four other electives uh, to total up to 23 credits. Um, the promotion requirements, um, as you see, it was six credits to move to 10th grade. It's going to be 13 credits to move to be a junior, um, but there's some specific things there that you need. You need two language arts credits, one math credit, one science credit, and one social studies credit uh, to move to be qualified as a junior. And then to move to a senior, you'll need 18 credits. Uh, to move to be a senior. So those are just a brief overview of the requirements that you need. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me about that. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. And Thank just to reiterate in the social studies area, our students do take four courses and the same four courses that every other uh, Georgia high school graduate and Barrow County graduate takes. It just so happens that our government and econ courses are only a half credit each. And so that's why we're grandfathered in with this three credit requirement, which does meet uh, the Georgia high school graduation requirements. But again, many of you will end up with four or more social studies credits because we're offering a lot of AP opportunities in social studies and there are many dual enrollment opportunities available in social studies as well. This is yours too, Dr. Murphy. So on here, it, um, these are the, requ the required courses that you'll be taking in 11th grade. For English, you'll be taking Amer American literature or honors American literature. Mathematics, it'll be geometry, geometry honors, and we will have some students that may also be taking pre-calculus. Um, social studies, you'll have an AP opportunity there. You'll have US history or AP US. Science, you'll have an opportunity to take chemistry, chemistry honors, physics, or environmental science. Um, and then also it's recommended if you have not taken Spanish one and Spanish two already or your foreign language, um, that this would be the time to try to get those included um, in, your, in your 11th grade year. All right, and Ms. Watts, our support programs. <clears throat> Yes, we have several support programs here at VASA that are in place to help all students succeed. We um, take great pride in what we do here to um, help students and make sure that all accommodations are met, whether it's through an IEP or through their 504 or their ESOL plan. Um, we um, offer many different um, options and we really try to um, help all students that are struggling um, to help bring them up to speed. We had some academic success plans that we went through last semester to help all these students really get to where they needed to be. And so we just have a lot of things in place in order for everyone to be successful. Thank you. I love talking about our dual enrollment and AP opportunities. In our AP program, students take courses and exams that can result in them earning college credit. If they score a certain um, achievement level on the exam, then they will get college credit for those courses. Here's a note. 
If your child plans to attend a selective college or university, so for example, UGA, Georgia Tech, Emory, some of those out-of-state institutions as well that have selective admissions practices, they are looking for uh, your student to take a number of AP courses. So the AP courses that we're offering are below. In ninth grade, we have AP Human Geography. Um, if your child has not taken that course yet, they can take it as an 11th grader. So you're not locked into these grade levels. We just categorize them for communication purposes. In the 10th grade, we have chemistry, computer science, and world history. So again, if your child hasn't taken any of those three, they can still take them even in 11th and 12th grade. In 11th grade, we have music theory, physics, studio art, and U.S. history. 12th grade, we have biology, calculus, economics, English language, government, and statistics. We are also working on an AP capstone program. So we've submitted our application for that. And that's where students are able to pursue um, a research project that's based on their academic interests. And so we hope to hear back on that application process very soon. We also have many early college courses available to our students through SIMS Academy. And those are dual enrollment opportunities, but they're taught on our schedule. Um, students are able to take these academic courses beginning their 11th grade year. So timely discussion for you all. And, and hear this, if your student wants to, to graduate from Lanier Tech, that is great. These courses will count toward their uh, degree program. However, if they wanna transfer to a different technical college system uh, institution in the state, or they wanna to go to a USG institution, which are any of those four-year colleges or universities. For, the, for by and large, these courses transfer to any public college or university in the state and many private colleges and out-of-state institutions as well. So as you can see, uh, we're offering three courses in language arts, two in mathematics, two in science, and seven in social sciences. So a lot of opportunities here. I am proud of the increased support that these students will receive um, in the beginning levels of English and mathematics. So for example, that English 1101 course, as well as Math 1111, the students will actually have access to their uh, college instructor four days per week instead of two days, uh, which will give them a good head start on their first uh, dual enrollment uh, college experience. We have several magnet programs, um, including art and design, biomedical science, hospitality and culinary arts, media arts, performing arts, and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The magnet program is the overall uh, program area, and then there are specific majors within each. And so in this example, in the art and design magnet, you have the 2D visual art major and the 3D visual art major. You also have some elective courses that are available as well. So the student would start out uh, taking visual art one and two, then three and four, then they would move into drawing and painting one and two and three and four. Uh, the same applies for the other magnet programs available in, again, art and design, biomedical science, hospitality and culinary arts. Notice that some of these also have cohorts available through SIMS Academy, such as the culinary arts cohort, where students are able to earn some technical certificates of credit from Lanier Tech while still enrolled in high school. And many end with dual enrollment or internship opportunities. Media arts, performing arts, which includes band, chorus, dance, the county's only dance program, drama, music technology, and several electives. And then science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You will have access to this presentation and I will also, also show on our website where you can access all of this information. So I bet you're wondering, how does my child sign up for classes and how can I review what they've selected? Your child's first and second semester teachers right now this week are entering course recommendations for their current students. So, and that applies to their first and second semester students. So for example, your child's language arts teacher is making course recommendations for their language arts courses for next year. Uh, your chorus teacher, they're making any fine arts course recommendations for your child. And that's all happening this week. 
Then next week, your child's crew leader will meet with them to discuss their full four-year graduation plan with a special focus on making sure that they're signed up for all of the courses that they need for next year, including eight courses for each semester, which also includes their academics, magnets, and electives, plus four alternates. Again, that's all happening next week. On February the 23rd, you will receive a printed copy of your child's course requests for next year. You'll have the opportunity then to write in any changes that you would like to see. Even if you don't make any changes though, we need that signed copy back from you as soon as possible. For any students who are new to BASA for next year, we will be reaching out to you individually to facilitate this process over the next week or so. We do have some resources that are available to you including our program document that outlines all of the different um, opportunities that we have for academic courses, but also uh, magnets and electives. So you see the course plan there for academics and for all of our magnet programs. We also have a registration guide which goes through a lot of really important academic information such as calculating GPA, um, athletics requirements for eligibility, diploma requirements, but it also has um, course descriptions for all of the courses that we offer. So if there's something that you or your child are considering uh, for them taking next year, then we encourage you to review that registration guide so that you can learn all about it. We do ask that all of these schedule requests be shared with us uh, by February the 26th. And in May, you will receive a final copy of your child's schedule for next year. You will have another opportunity then in May to make tweaks. And um, we ask that you help us by turning in any requests that you have for changes by February the 26th. But certainly in May, if there has been a, a change in in pathway or you want to change from honors to non-honors, whatever the case may be, uh, we will uh, accommodate those requests if we are able to do so. I do want to let you know that our crew leaders have been instructed if your child requests to um, move up to honors or back to a regular course from an honors class uh, after the teachers recommended them for a, a different pathway with that, uh, you'll have the opportunity to request those changes when you write in, uh, when you get a copy of the course list and you write in any tweaks that you would like to make. So crew leaders won't make the decision uh, with your child about switching up to honors or back down to regular, but instead you talk with your child and uh, write in those schedule change requests directly on the list and send it back. You will get instructions with how to do that. And then we will uh, discuss it as a team. We'll look at your child's previous grades and prior achievement levels to make sure that they're in the best uh, possible setting. All right, Dr. Murphy, I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk about the importance of the high school transcript. Uh, I just wanted to mention a little bit about the transcripts. Um, at the counseling office, we have not released the transcripts yet. Uh, for for right now, we've had some little minor glitches that have been happening with rolling over some a few grades. So, but we do plan on releasing those shortly so that you can check to make sure everything is correct on your transcript. Also, just to make sure that you understand every grade that you have taken um, at your previous high school and here will be listed on your transcript. You want to make sure that everything is there. Like if you were supposed to get credits. Um, from a middle school, if you were taking things in middle school and needed credits for those. Uh, also, if you had taken the summer health and PE, um, when you get your transcript, it's going to be important for you to check over that to make sure everything looks um, correct. Uh, also, if you happen to have failed a course um, over the course of this um, fall semester, It'll be important for you to get in touch with me uh, so that we can talk about um, recovering that credit through an alternate delivery model such as Foothills. Um, and we just need to make sure that we get that taken care of. Um, but your transcript is very important. Um, your transcript is gonna be listing your GPA. 
Your transcript is also going to be listing your class rank. Um, and when we release those transcripts here shortly, um, those things will be listed on there for you to be able to take a look at. Um, but those things are very important when it comes to college admissions. Um, all of your grades from freshman year to your senior year will be listed there. They're also important for scholarship opportunities, um, such as the HOPE Scholarship or the Zell Miller. You can check out what your HOPE GPA is on Georgia Futures, and we will talk about that um, hopefully at another uh, session that we're going to be having soon. Also, your GPA uh, is important for dual enrollment opportunities that we're talking about, about being able to take academic courses um, at other institutions and um, valedictorian, salutatorian, and honor graduates um, are kind of determined from how you're doing in your classes. Um, if you have any questions about anything about your transcript, you are welcome to come see me. I also wanted to let you know, um, probably toward the end of the spring semester, starting in the summer, after we have our your final courses um, scheduled for next year, uh, I would like to have individual meetings with all of you to do a junior meeting to review your transcript, talk about your plans for junior year, and talk about your post-secondary plans and where we're heading towards your senior year. So as soon as we get those done, we can certainly go over those to make sure you are uh, moving in the right direction. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Mr. Puzer, could you talk to us about athletics and activities? We have a large number of uh, folks who are watching this video who have been at VASA before, but we're still hoping if you have not participated in any athletics or student activities that you'll get plugged in to what's going on at VASA. So could you talk to us about the exciting things that are going on? Absolutely, Dr. Simpson. Um, currently at BASA, we have 12 Georgia High School Association or GAC, uh, GHSA, excuse me, sanctioned programs that we offer. Uh, what's unique about this is that we offer almost twice the number of athletic programs offered by schools that are similar to us in size and in design. And so what that really means is that uh, we, more of our students have uh, more opportunities to participate in sports than at most other schools. And so we're really excited about that. And so, um, you know, those students who are interested in, in playing sports, if you've uh, never played a sport before, if you've been playing for many years, you still have the opportunity to participate in one of our 12 sports and, and you know, really have a good experience. Uh, currently, most of our programs are performing at the JV level. Uh, that excludes Esports and gymnastics, which are varsity only. So all students are eligible to participate in our JV sports programs. Um, I do want to mention that uh, thus far, uh, Bassa Athletics has really set the bar high for, um, for years to come and what we expect from my athletes and, and from my athletic programs. Uh, just to highlight a couple things that um, are just a couple of accolades and achievements that our sports programs have uh, garnered this year. Um, for example, our cross country team, uh, they won their region uh, in, um, uh, at the cross country region meeting, uh, what was it, Social Circle, uh, this past uh, fall. And we had, three, we had five uh, of our students who actually placed uh, uh, either in rankings first and third, which is awesome. So we had two uh, female uh, runners who placed first and second. And then we had uh, three male students who placed first, second, third. So it was awesome to, you know, to see that. Uh, and, and just our first year in just received uh, all of those accolades and those awards. Um, just recently, uh, our competitive dance program uh, placed first in their competition at McIntosh High School in Peachtree City. Uh, and also our soccer team just finished uh, their opening uh, game last Thursday at Big Lord Park, uh, our girls soccer team tied with Jasper County High School and our boys team uh, defeated Jasper County High School eight to zero. So we have a lot of great things happening in our athletic um, programs and our athletic department. And again, all of our programs this year have really set the bar high for what's to come uh, for Bassa Athletics. And we want each of you to be a part of that if you choose to do so. 
Uh, many of our athletic programs will be uh, at the varsity level by the 2022-23 school year, which means just in time for you rising uh, juniors to be rising seniors. So we're really excited about that. So please, if you are interested, uh, re uh, definitely contact me or contact uh, any of our coaches to, to express your interest so that we can get you the necessary information. And then we also recognize that there are students who are not necessarily interested in athletics, but they also have other interests. Uh, and so we have extracurricular activities and also clubs at BASA. And so if you check our website, you'll see a list of all of those clubs and activities that we offer. However, we do know that, you know, there may be uh, some, some things of interest to you that are not on that list. So um, if there's something that you're interested in and you find that there's some other students on campus that may be interested in it as well, it's very easy to try to get that club on campus. All it takes is you finding a faculty sponsor who's willing to um, be a part of that um, club or activity with you. And then that faculty sponsor will either reach out to myself or Dr. Simpson or Ms. Watts so that we can collaborate to figure out the best way to, uh, to get that club on campus. All right, our Bassa Athletics Booster Club. This is a very important organization to our sports program and to our students, student athletes. Essentially, this uh, program is, oh, I'm sorry, this organization is there to support our students and our coaches and our athletic programs uh, financially, um, through volunteering, and just, just, just through promoting the different programs that we have on campus. Um, there's going to be a lot of information concerning the Bassa Athletics Booster Club that's coming out very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, I did want to provide the contact information to our Booster Club board. And so um, if you reach out to any of these uh, women that you see on the screen below, uh, they will be happy to uh, provide any additional information that you may need, whether it's in regards to membership, uh, volunteering, or or making uh, corporate donations or corporate sponsorships or any type of donation to our student athletes and to our coaches. Thank you, Mr. Boozer. All right, Dr. Murphy, if you could talk to us about PSAT, SAT, and ACT, that's a lot of acronyms in one place. So if you could talk about how this information affects our rising juniors. Yes, this is, some, this is a lot of information for our juniors. Um, the PSAT, all of our uh, sophomores have taken the PSAT this year. I would like to encourage all of you to take the PSAT again at, in October of your junior year because this is the, um, the PSAT in your 11th grade year that determines the National Merit Scholarship. It puts you in the running for that scholarship. So please make plans um, to take that, the PSAT again. Uh, then in the uh, spring of your junior year, that's when you want to be sure that you're signing up for the ACT or the SAT, um, and possibly even earlier if you're thinking about some dual enrollment at some, some institution other than Lanier Tech. Um, right now, um, it's important to go to the ACT and the SAT website to look at those because right now due to COVID-19, um, there are very few um, testing locations, so it may be, hopefully that's going to change starting next fall when all of you will be testing. Also, a lot of colleges have become testing optional, so I'm not really sure uh, how many institutions will be using these tests, but we'll just have to kind of learn and talk about that together as we go um, to see where we're heading in that direction. Also, with your PSAT, Scores when you go to the collegeboard.com, you'll also are going to have an account on the Khan Academy uh, to be able to um, do some review work before you take the SAT. So that is a valuable resource that you want to take advantage of before you go in and take the SAT or the ACT again. Be sure that you've um, made a College Board account. On the College Board, that's where you can sign up for the SAT. You can review your PSAT scores. You can also go to the AP Potential. That is where they can talk to you about which a a AP or advanced placement courses may be um, the best fit for you. Uh, and they also have um, scholarship searches and college searches on the College Board account. So you can do a, a lot of different things um, with that. And we certainly do encourage you um, to go ahead and get your account set up. Um, also there on that page, you can see I did a link um, to compare the SAT and the ACT. 
Um, I would encourage you, and we can talk about this when we meet, um, but I would encourage you to take both the SAT and the ACT. They are very different tests. Um, to see which one you may do better on and kind of take that the test that you do better on um, going forward. So we can talk more about that. As I said, we're going to try to do another session to talk more about planning for college. Um, but this just kind of gives you a, a quick little update and to kind of talk to you about um, how important and these things that are coming coming soon. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. As Dr. Murphy uh, mentioned, we do have another event coming up where we will dive even deeper into uh, what high school is all about. And so this will be especially for eighth grade families and students. We will talk about class rank, Hope Scholarship, PSAT, um, SAT, dual enrollment, and many other important things that need to be on the top of your mind as your child moves through high school. So we are hoping to have this meeting in person um, so we're kind of postponing it a little bit and through the summer to see how the COVID situation evolves. Um, if we need to do it digitally, we certainly will, but that's why we're holding out on a setting a firm date. So hopefully uh, we will have that meeting in person over the summer, but again, it may be digital, just kind of depends on how things work out. We also have another event for new students that will be held each summer to welcome our new students and families to BASA. And this is where you'll learn everything logistical that you need to have a successful start to the school year, including meals, transportation, bell schedules, and everything in between. We are not sure if this will be held in person or digital. Uh, we hope that it'll be in person so you can see our campus and get a tour and make sure that you know where your classes are but again, we will communicate those dates and details as soon as they're available. I do want to recap the registration process that we're currently going through because that's the most uh, timely uh, information that you're getting from this presentation. And so again, your, your child's teachers are making their recommendations right now for the next courses in their area. And then next week is when your student will meet with their crew leader individually and talk through their graduation plan for their junior and senior year. And they will firm up what eight courses and four alternates they wish to take for next school year. And then of course, on February the 23rd is when you will receive what your child has requested and you'll have the opportunity to make any changes from there. Again, for any students who are brand new to BASA, we will be reaching out to you uh, to handle those registration conversations very soon. And then lastly, we have a plug for our first yearbook. This is the cover. It looks very nice. And so if your child is currently at BASA, we encourage you to purchase this yearbook. They are only $50. They will go up to $60 after April the 16th. But 2020 was a year uh, for history. And you're going to want this uh, piece of history because it's captured all of the unique circumstances of this year including uh, mask wearing, digital learning, hybrid learning, and all of the, the great things that we've had happen this year, uh, even amidst the, the pandemic. And then lastly, I'm gonna ask Ms. Watts to share with us any questions that would be really good for the entire group to hear a response to. We have had some great questions come through. So I'm gonna give a shout out to Sadie because her question is, uh, she wants to know if it's possible for the 2023 seniors to have a senior trip. Yeah. So they, can come, they can come up with fundraising ideas and it would be a great way to end their high school career. Most definitely. And Sadie, that's the great thing about BASA or one great thing about BASA is that we really rely on our student leaders to, to, to present these ideas and then to help plan them. So your school governance team representatives are Holly Wesley and Sean Brown. So I really encourage you to talk to both of those students about your idea and also come to the front office and set an appointment with me and we can talk about what ideas uh, you have. We can yes. set up a focus group and plan for it to happen. I also wanna point out for this first graduating class from BASA, uh, you will have the opportunity to fundraise next year for our senior balcony. And so we hope to equip that with some really nice furnishings, what you choose and fundraise for. And then you will have that privilege 
challenge as a senior, as will the seniors who follow you, of using that balcony right outside of the R&D center. So we really do rely on student leadership to make things happen around BASA. So thank you for bringing that up, Sadie. Okay. Another question is from a student that is coming from a different county. He wants to know um, when he could meet with crew leaders or counselors about registration and getting his classes set up. Absolutely. We do have a limited number of students joining us um, in this rising junior class. And so we will be reaching out to every one of those parents individually to start having that conversation about what courses you would like to take next year. So I would anticipate that phone call uh, within the next week or so. And we'll just set up a time where the student and the parent and us can, can have that conversation. Okay. And are we offering AP? Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone um, who is invited to this presentation uh, registered, excuse me, filled out an application and was accepted at BASA. If your child was accepted, but they're not currently attending school in the Barrow County school system, you do need to get registered. You need to enroll at the district office as quickly as possible because we cannot um, make all of the course recommendations and determine next year's plan until we have access to your child's previous transcript and schedule and until they're in our system so that we can actually register for them. So if you're new to the Barrow County school system and have not actually gone to the district to enroll your child, please take care of that as soon as possible. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hey, Caitlin. Caitlin asked two questions. She wants to know if we're going to have AP Physics um, our, her senior year. For senior year, we do anticipate uh, offering AP Physics. We, we should have at least one section of physics honors for this uh, upcoming school year. And Mr. Mitchell, I anticipate, will be teaching those courses. And he has a lot of experience teaching physics. Okay. And her next question is, will we get Letterman jackets when we become a varsity team? Uh, Mr. Puzer, could you respond to that? Yes, yeah, so we will have varsity or letterman jackets uh, soon. Uh, I've been in contact with the rep at Balfour, and so we are working diligently to see if we can actually uh, get our letterman jacket together so that we could potentially put, push out those order forms before school gets out for this school year. Got it. Okay. And another question is, do I need to take the ACT or SAT to qualify for dual enrollment next school year? And how early do I need to take it before October? You do not need to take it uh, for next year. And you may not need to take it at all because mm -hmm. if you have a 2.6 high school GPA, you do not have to take uh, any sort of admissions test to take dual enrollment credits. You would need to take it when you're applying to college later but to take dual enrollment, you may not need that. So um, Ms. Watts, did that student put their name so we can reach out to them individually to get them signed up for the Sims Academy dual enrollment program? Yes, yes and that's our new student coming from a different county. So we'll oh, need to right. reach out. Yeah. Yes, that is, that's great. Uh, we Listen, the state wants to invest 30 semester hours in your child before they graduate from high school. And we want to let them, and we encourage you to let the state do that. And so any opportunity that we have to get students in those dual enrollment courses, we're gonna take it. Okay. And I think um, Dr. Murphy can answer this one or you can. Uh, can you get the Hope Scholarship without the PSAT scores? Yes, you do not have to take the PSAT to get the Hope Scholarship. The Hope Scholarship is based um, on your GPA um, and then uh, the Zell Miller, which is the uh, higher, um, the full tuition coverage of the Hope Scholarship is based on your GPA and your SAT score or your ACT score, not the PSAT. Okay, then we have one last question. Is there a pathway that is similar to the law enforcement slash correction pathway? If, that is, if there's not, what could I take that will lead me into the criminology pathway? Uh, that's a great question. We actually do have a criminal justice cohort through Sims Academy. So I encourage you to visit simsacademyit.org 
and then mouse over programs. And in the middle, you'll see college programs. In that menu, click on criminal justice. There is a great video where uh, the Winder police chief, Jim Fullington, and also a recruiter from the Barrow County Sheriff's Office talks about the opportunities available in law enforcement, not only locally, but in our region and in our state. We also have representatives there from Lanier Technical College who can speak to um, the criminal justice program there. So you can actually graduate from high school and already have your technical certificate, certificate of credit from Lanier Technical College in criminal justice and never have to leave our campus, which is a, a beautiful thing. Okay, that is all of our questions. Well, listen, I cannot thank you all enough for tuning into this video live or many of you I know will be watching the recording. We have absolutely loved having your children at VASA. It has been a great school year, even amongst uh, chaos and turmoil in the world. It has been a great year of VASA. Our students and our teachers have really came together and they've made a community and this school has taken on a life of its own because of the, the great students and the great teachers that we have. So we can't thank you enough uh, for taking a risk with us and bringing your child over to VASA. The first some of you are now bringing your children over this second year us being here uh, we have a great group of teachers they love our students they love their content area and they love to teach and so i cannot say enough what great hands your child is in if they are attending vasa every morning at the end of our announcements uh, we close with this at vasa we stand for the i care framework integrity community accountability, respect, and excellence. Go Blazers. Have a great night.